Okay, let's talk about the Washington Algebra 1 EOC. And EOC stands uh, for end of course test. So if you're watching this video, I assume you're a high school student in Washington and you're preparing for the Algebra 1 EOC. So that's a good thing if you're watching this video because you're clearly taking this test seriously and you definitely need to take uh, all these end of course tests seriously. Each state has uh, generally has their own version of these, so you don't uh, don't feel alone that hey, only in Washington you take these EOCs. All states have something similar. Okay, so you have to take all these tests, especially these end of course tests, very seriously. Um, it's not only going to benefit you, you know, as far as preparing for the EOC, you know, on the uh, specific test. It's going to help your grade. It's going to help you. Uh, for future math courses that you're going to be taking in high school. But what I have here is an algebra practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty easily if you're fully prepared for the Algebra 1 EOC. We'll get to this in a second, but first let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over the last uh, several years, I've constructed many online math courses to include a Washington Algebra 1 EOC prep course. Uh, very comprehensive. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video if you want to check that out. But let's go ahead and get to this problem. So um, now I haven't told you the problem yet, but I'm just about uh, ready to do so. Okay, so I'm going to explain the problem. Okay, once I've done that, those of you who think you can do it, go ahead and do it. Then I'm going to give a hint, okay? Uh, if you want a little bit of a hint, continue watching the video, then try it. And then obviously I'm going to go ahead and solve the problem. Okay, so here I have some sort of model, okay, of something going on. And basically, I want to know if this represents a function, okay? A function. So... Uh, we have something right here. We have some numbers, sets of numbers in the X okay, uh, bucket, if you will. And then we have a set of numbers in the Y bucket. okay. And then these arrows should mean something to you. When you're studying functions in Algebra 1, you should have come across uh, uh, this concept um, when you were studying functions. Now, that you know, is pretty much the direct question is what's going on here, a function. Now I'm going to give a hint, okay? If you feel like you can answer the question, go ahead and pause the video and think about it. Uh, it's really uh, pretty much if you know what you're doing, you'll be able to answer this pretty quickly, okay? Now, if you need a little bit of a hint, I'm going to give you a hint now. Okay, so here we go. So if uh, something is a function, it's also a uh, relation, okay? So some relations, okay, are functions, okay? Some relations are functions. So what are relations? Uh, pretty much you can kind of think of relations as points, um, order pairs on the X, Y plane. This is a huge topic, can really get into it. But basically all functions are relations, not all relations are functions. So there's a very specific definition about functions and there's different ways to kind of think about it, but you need to be able to, to determine whether something is a function or not, okay? Now, when we're looking at X and Y's, okay, you want to think of the X as what? This is your input values, input, and then the Y's are going to be your output values, okay? We also call the set of input values, and so for this particular situation, okay, this is definitely a relation, but is it a function, okay? So uh, over here, these input values, okay, if it is a function, we would call the set of all the input values would be called the domain, and then the set of all output values would be called the range, okay? So this is just a quick general recap on basic function concepts. Now, um, those are, this is kind of your hint, if you will, and now I'm going to go ahead and um, explain this, okay, or solve it. All right, so is it a function, yes or no? Let's go through it. So a function is basically this, okay? Let's just do it this way real quick, graphically speaking. So here we have input values, all right? And here is our output values. So a function says that 
when you plug in an input value, let's say one, okay, you're going to get one unique output value, okay? So if I plug in, if I drop a one into this function machine, it's kind of, let's do it like this. If this is in fact a function, you're going to get some sort of output, but the output's going to be very, very um, specific to this input. In other words, you're only going to get one, okay? One uh, output value. So let's say here you are, you pick up a one, all right? You're like, okay, let's throw a one into this machine and let's see what happens, okay? You, you do that and a seven pops out. I say, oh, okay, that was pretty cool. I plugged, I threw a one into my little function machine and a seven popped out. And you're, you're looking around for some other numbers and you say, oh, look, I got another one in here. Let's go and throw that into this machine again. And when you throw this one into this machine, what would you expect to pop out? Okay, hopefully you said, oh yeah, well, a seven should pop out. In other words, when you plug in this value, only one output value is going to plug or be um, produced, okay? And I'm just kind of speaking in broad generalities here with functions, but this is kind of a good little model to think about it. Now, so that's what a function is. A, fu a function is, by definition, is it, when you plug in an input value, you're gonna get one and only one output value, one unique output value. Okay, so here, in this model, what this is saying is when you have an input of one, you get the output of seven. You can also think of this as the point one, seven, okay? So here is where this model starts to break down in terms of it being a function or not, okay? So let's go ahead and go to four. Let's take a look at what's going on with four. So we'll say, let's take a four and throw it into our function machine. So what's gonna pop out? Well, you're gonna get a three, According to this graphic, four is going to map to three. This is what we call mapping, by the way. So four is going to you're, you're, is going to map to three. Okay, so when I throw a four in, I get a three. But sometimes if I throw a four in as well, I'm also going to get a five. Okay, so if I throw a four in, I get a three, or throw a four in again, you may get a five. So this situation right here, when you have one input value mapping to um, more than one output value, like what's going on here, this fails the definition of a function. So we would classify this as a relation. So this is not a function, not a function. So let's kind of mess with this problem for a little bit. So the, the answer here is this is not a function, but let's mess with these arrows a little bit. And let's say I did it this way, okay? Uh, let's see here. Um, let's take all these numbers off. And what if I gave the problem like so, okay? Now the question is, is this a function, okay? Is this a function? Let's think about it, okay? Well, actually, if you want to pause the video before I go ahead and answer it, okay, what do you think? Function or not a function? Well, let's go ahead and just kind of use our, our model here. So when I throw a one in, okay, my output value is seven and only seven, okay? So that's good. I'm only getting one unique output value, so that's okay. Now, when I throw a four in, what's gonna happen? Well, I'm gonna get one and only output, one and only one output value, that's seven as well, okay? So it maps to a seven. So here you might say, well, no, this is not a function. No, this is a function because each input value is going to one and only one output value. Okay, each input value is going to one and only one output value, and it can be the same value. All right, so this is okay. It can be the same value. So don't be tricked with this. And, uh, you know, this is often confusing for students when they're uh, understanding you know, the concept of functions. A function is a huge part of mathematics, okay? And often we um, can illustrate this, you know, the concept of functions by using mappy diagrams like, like so. But you also may be given this problem in this way, okay? So these mappings, all right, one is mapping to seven is the same thing as the point one seven, okay? Four mapping to seven is the point four seven and the negative two mapping to seven is the same thing as the point negative two seven so 
I could have given you this problem as so is the set of these order pairs or the set of these points okay on an xy plane does this represent a function so you're going to have to be able to um, decipher this as a very common type of question in algebra to test whether you're not uh, whether or not you're dealing with a function or a relation okay so anyways so hopefully uh you know if you're able to get that right and justify your answer in other words you know don't just say yes function and you kind of got lucky but you don't know why you said that <laughs> but if you're able to you know um uh, support your conclusions accurately as I discussed that's very good okay if you struggled a bit with it or if you're completely lost don't panic just use this as feedback okay so you can uh, you know make adjustments before you take the Washington Algebra 1 EOC so all these videos I like to go ahead and always remind you uh, the student and stress to you is that always take full advantage of what uh, uh, what your teacher is saying. They're going to be the most up to date uh, on you know the Algebra One EOC. If they're there to help you. Okay, so before you you know start looking for other resources to study from, make sure you're listening to your teacher. And you take full advantage of what's going on in class. Now, if you need things beyond the uh, your math class. Okay, and what your teacher is offering, which you know, like this common, you may need a tutor or or some additional help. Then my my Washington Algebra One EOC prep course would be uh, be highly beneficial uh, to you. Super comprehensive. Uh, all my uh, courses have taken me years to build, so I think you'll be really impressed with it. But again, I'm going to leave the link to that in the description of uh, the, the this uh, video. So, if you're new to my YouTube uh, videos uh, and my channel. I've been on YouTube at least the time of this video for a good 12 years. I have hundreds of math videos on my channel that can help you out. So if you like my teaching style, I got all this stuff currently that uh, on my channel that can uh, really you know help you prepare for the Algebra One EOC, and I'm um, posting stuff all the time. So hopefully you consider subscribing. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. How's math been? Uh, probably at the time of this video with. Uh, many states having to been locked down, a lot of students, you know, not being able to actually go to school and doing, you know, remote online learning. It's pr probably for the most of you, it's been uh, more difficult than not. Um, I will say this much. Um, Algebra 1 is, you know, all math courses are, are important. But Algebra 1, I might write my, if I had to be forced to say which is the most important uh, math course that you you know, might be taking when you're middle and high school years, I would probably categorize out uh, Algebra 1 as that, as the most important because all your other future high school courses, math courses, are going to be built off Algebra 1. So if you struggled with it or, you know, you're having problems with it, when you finish the course, don't just say, oh, that was terrible. Nah, I really didn't understand much. Try to do something um, you know, maybe over the summer to try to, you know, increase your understanding. Because if you don't address that, if you just kind of go to, you know, generally speaking, courses go from Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. So if you didn't really do too well in Algebra 1, well, guess what? There's a lot of Algebra 1 concepts in Geometry. Then Algebra 2 is a repeat of Algebra 1 plus new advanced stuff. So this is just going to continue to haunt you and follow you. So better for you to address you know, what you didn't learn now, okay? And a course like uh, mine could definitely, you know, help you uh, increase your understanding of Algebra 1. It's that critical. But anyways, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the Washington Algebra 1 EOC and all your other academic adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.